They were the George Clooney and Brad Pitt of the 1930s and 40s. Humphrey Bogart and Tyrone Power, two of Hollywood's most famous movie stars. Earlier this month, their sons came to Malabar Farm in Central Ohio for a first time visit. Tyrone Power Jr., son of film icon Tyrone Power, and Stephen Bogart, son of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Malabar Farm was built in 1938 by world famous author Lewis Bromfield, and it quickly became a hangout for Hollywood's elite. But that's part of the game. It just was the beginning of everything and the beginning of me, I guess. Hollywood returns to Ohio. Two men, sons of famous faces, supporting the preservation of Malabar Farm State Park. I said, I have to be here because it's such an important part of, of course, my family's history, but it's an important part of, of Ohio history as well. And to hear that it might have been going into disrepair was a big problem for me. And I said, sure, what can I do? And he said, come on out. We're going to do a big fundraising thing. So we did. Uh, the farm sounded fantastic. I'm, I'm a total history buff, and I'm a total Hollywood history buff. And I, it was a no-brainer. I said, I'm there. This was the first time Stephen Bogard and Tyrone Power have been to Malabar Farm, but they know their family's history at the farm. In the 40s, Hollywood's elite would come here to visit novelist Louis Bromfield and to escape the rat race of New York City and Los Angeles. It was a place to relax and enjoy nature, but a visit also involved some hard work. And Bromfield believed that everybody who came to the farm learned how to work on the farm as well. So in the morning, you would get a little index card with the chores that you needed to do. So we'd have James Cagney selling produce down at the produce stand, Kay Francis maybe stirring apple butter, and another celebrity maybe helping birthing uh, sheep or cleaning out the stalls. Stephen says his father, Humphrey Bogart, loved writing and was friends with many writers. He'd met Bromfield in a bar after a play at some point, and they became fast friends. And of course, as Ty said, Louie was uh, a phenomenal writer, Pulitzer Prize winner great screenwriter. Them coming back here to get married was great for him and it was great for my mother and of course we ended up with one of the puppies of Louis Bromfield's boxer and we named the dog Harvey and then there was Baby, a puppy from them and then a George, another puppy. It was during the filming of To Have and Have Not in 1944 when Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall first met. Now, Stephen says his mother didn't really like Bogart at first. She was just 19 and he was 44. But the romance scene on the big screen soon blossomed into real life. Then, in May of 1945... Louis was very good friends with Bogart, and Bogart came to Louis and said, you know, I want to get a simple wedding away from it all, and I'd like to have it at your place. Would you be my best man? And Louis said, sure, come on down to Malabar Farm. So they came down over the weekend, went into uh, Mansfield, Ohio, got a marriage license and got married that weekend. It was supposed to be a private affair. Uh, no one was supposed to know about it, just close friends and things. The Hollywood wedding in an Ohio farmhouse. The real life wedding of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. With their host, novelist Louis Bromfield, the famous screen lovers pose for Paramount News cameras. But somehow the media got a hold of it and Paramount Pictures. And when they went to have the wedding, the, the lawn was covered with with people and paparazzi and things, so they had to move the wedding inside the house. These are the stairs that my mom came down. Well, they had a great time. I mean, you know, as she said in her book, uh, she was a little late coming down the stairs when the music started playing and people started uh, calling up to George, where's Betty, where's Betty? And George uh, yelled down, she's in the can. So she was having a little uh, nervousness before the wedding and she went to the bathroom and she was a little late coming down the stairs, but. Everything was okay and it worked out. After the wedding, Bogey and Bacall stayed the night at Malabar before jetting back to Hollywood life. It was very interesting going up to the honeymoon suite with the two beds on either side. Of course, my mother was asked at, at one point I, from somebody who had visited Malabar, well, there were two beds on either side of the door. What did you do? And my mother said, we pushed them together. As Stephen Bogart and Tyrone Power toured the house, they reflected on the time capsule that is this house. Uh, kids now will have never seen anything like this, except, you know, maybe a fake sets in a movie. Um, but the real stuff, uh, to really see what it was like uh, waking up in the morning and living here in 1945 is, is pretty special. It doesn't really exist anywhere. 
Malabar Farm is an important part of Tyrone's family history as well. Brumfield produced the movie The Rains Came, starring his father, Tyrone Power. Power never got to meet his dad. He was born just two months after his father passed away in 1959. I remember getting almost a little scared at one point when I was a kid. I walked, my mother was putting on her makeup to go out uh, for the oh, evening, and I walked in and stood in the doorway to ask her a question, and she went absolutely white. And I, I, I got frightened. I said, what's wrong? What's going on? And apparently the way I was standing with my hand on my hip in a certain way was exactly the way my father stood all the time. Now, how would I know that at that age? Bogart was a young boy when his father died as well. So I have snapshots. Uh, I mean, he died when I was eight, which was 55 years ago. And I have specific snapshots of him. I don't have any movies in my head of continuous stuff. But I remember him, remember he was, he was working a lot. And he'd come home at night and uh, he'd want to relax for a little bit. And then he'd want to have dinner with my mother because it was very important to him. He was older when, when they got married in 1945. He was 45 and she was 20. Uh, it's 25 years. So he, his most important thing to him was, was he wanted her with him. He never thought he'd be a parent. Uh, until, of course, my mother got pregnant. Stephen now lives in Florida and works in real estate. He's written several books and also manages his father's name and image. I think the best part is, is being able to meet and see the people that I've been able to meet and do the things that I've been able to do. I find, as it turns out, I'm a pretty lucky guy. You know, I, people say, wasn't it difficult growing up as the son of two incredibly famous people. As I said, my teens, my 20s, yeah, it was difficult. But then as you get older, you look back and, and you say, a lot of people have it a lot worse. It's uh, could have been worse, could have been worse. Tyrone is an actor living in California. He appeared in many movies, including Cocoon in 1985. Whatever kind of family you grow up in and whatever conversation you hear around the dining room table, you're going to sort of gravitate to that as a kid. And I was around actors and directors and producers and whatnot. So, and I thought, they're, they're smart people, and it kind of looks like fun. At least I'll try it. And so, with their visit to the rolling hills of central Ohio, far from the sparkle of Hollywood, more memories are made at Malabar Farm. Stephen says his mom, Lauren Bacall, is doing well. She's living in New York, and he says she's still as feisty as ever. She never made a return trip to Malabar Farm after the wedding, but he says she was very happy Stephen was going to visit and wants him to tell her all about it. Bogey and Bacall's first film together, To Have and Have Not, is playing as part of the Kappa Summer movie series tomorrow night at the Ohio Theater. And by the way, Stephen is actually named after Bogart's character in the film. Well, you have probably looked up during your lunch hour and seen them high above, dangling off the side of our downtown buildings. That's the moment of truth. That's what it is. Hey, you know, no turning back now. Once you're over there, you're over, bud. Hey. Up next, what it's like to go over the edge with our city's high-rise window washers when 10TV News Presents continues. <laughs>